This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Out and About on Think Tech Live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza at the core here in Honolulu. I'm your host, Winston Welch, and I am delighted that you're joining us today where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization I may be affiliated with. Joining me in the studio today, I am delighted to have Phyllis Dendel, who is the Board Chair of Marketing and Development of Waikiki Health, and today we're going to talk about uh, Waikiki Health and it's over 50 years of service to the community and uh, vital services indeed it provides uh, lots of programs that it offers in medical care, preventative care and social services. So with that I would like to welcome you to our show today Phyllis. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. Uh, yes so you're, you're volunteering with this tremendous organization that has a really fundamental um, impact in our society uh, really here on the islands. It's functioning as a the basic safety net? We are, we are. It's, um, we, we have been here for, for 50 years. We started as Waikiki Drug Clinic uh, in 1967 and have since grown to an organization with uh, six locations throughout Oahu uh, providing clinical services and providing services to um, homeless folks. Um, I started with the board in 2008 right after our executive director Sheila Beckham came on board. Okay. Um, so I've been there for lots of the changes we've had in the last uh, the last nine years. Okay, so it's almost been ten years you've been serving almost. on the board. Okay, and uh, you've seen this program, I think, uh, the, the, the Waikiki Health expand and change in we many have. ways. What would you say are the biggest changes that you've seen? Well, we've um, probably doubled the number of locations that we provide services. We have expanded the population we provide services to. Um, we are, while we are Waikiki Health, we are not strictly located in Waikiki. We provide services to the broader community on Oahu. Um, and uh, we have, uh, as, a, as a federally qualified community health center, which is a federal designation for health centers, um, FQHC is the, is the shorthand for it, um, we are the safety net. We provide services to people regardless of their ability to pay. Any insurance, you know, no insurance, it doesn't make any difference. If you show up at our door, we provide care. And um, that's really essential in this community because the only other place you can do that is an emergency room at a hospital. And that's, that's not the best place to get primary care. And it's certainly not the place to get behavioral health or any of the kinds of services that folks need just generally in like you and I would need in regular life so wow so this the federally qualified health center designation uh, are there a lot of uh, different agencies on this island that have that or? there are there are several we're fortunate that we have a number of community health centers um, located throughout Oahu and on the neighbor islands that are federally qualified health centers this provides us access to some federal funding because we are, as I said, the safety net, the, the place that takes everybody regardless of their ability to pay. Um, our patient population mix, the, the number of patients that are there, or sort of where our patients come from, over half are Medicaid patients uh, covered by um, our, our Medicaid program in the state of Hawaii. Um, but about 20% of our patients are uninsured. I think it's 17% of our patients are uninsured, mm. um, which means they just walk in off the street with, with nothing. And we, it's our job to make sure that they get the health care that they need. And it's our privilege to make sure they get the health care that they need. Yes, th thank you for saying that, because I think in this day and age, we've been almost taught to, well, percentage of the population might, might believe that health care is a privilege and not a right. And when we realize that poor health affects all of us fundamentally, I mean, the individual certainly is impacted the, uh, the greatest when he or she cannot receive base, even basic, basic uh, care. Mm -hmm. And then, though, of course, we get a lot of side effects out of that in, in society that we, that we can easily see. So I don't, I didn't, 
I don't know that most people realize that there was any alternative where they could can walk in and say they don't have insurance because, for whatever reason they don't yeah. have insurance and uh, certainly cost would be one of those and I read something recently that 40 percent of people working on this island are working for minimum wage so you can do the yeah. math on that say but just round up to ten dollars an hour you're working 40 hours a week that's 1600 or so maybe 1800 a month mm -hmm. and the government's still going to take out a little bit of that and your average rent for a, a two-bedroom apartment is probably 2400 so even if you have two full-time jobs and you got a couple kids uh, you know how's this it's not the yeah. math doesn't work out no it doesn't yeah no, it doesn't I, I want to I want to sort of talk about the other side of this as well, though, in mm -hmm. that the health care that we provide through Waikiki Health, um, Waikiki Health, at our Hua Clinic, and at the Makahiki Clinic in Makali Mo'iliili, um, is is excellent health care. This is not second second quality health care in any way. Mm -hmm. um, the remainder of our patient load. Are folks with insurance, and you got to remember the folks with Medicaid basically have, have insurance. insurance. Yes, um, lots of the folks choose to come to our clinic because um, it's conveniently located. Um, we have good hours. Mm -hmm. We are small and friendly. It is um, in every way as fine a medical clinic as you would find in any of the other clinics throughout the state. Any of the other larger hospitals that have clinics, it's the same kind of clinic. Setting. So I don't want to leave the impression that we only serve right. folks that are underprivileged. We, we don't. We have yeah. a number of patients, uh, and a, a pretty good percentage of our patients that come because they want to be there because we provide good care. Right. And, and, you're, and for the, the, your, your two main offices, the Makahiki Clinic is in the uh, Moiliili, Makoli correct. area. And then the other one is the Ohua Clinic, which is sort of in the original location. Uh, Pretty close, pretty close to the original location. We've had a couple of locations on Ohua, um, you know, because when we started out, we were in spaces that we could, were either donated or we got at a, a very reasonable rate. Yeah. Um, Ohua is right next to Waikiki Community Center, mm -hmm. where we're like back to back there. Okay. Um, so that's an easy spot to to lo to find us. It's a uh, it's a nice central location for folks that live in Waikiki and work in Waikiki. That's the other thing is that if you work in Waikiki and you want to schedule a doctor's appointment, we are a great choice to get your, your basic primary medical care, yeah. behavioral health. We have a pharmacy in both of those locations. You could get your pharmacy items filled there. The whole, the whole point is we're very convenient, not only for the folks who live there, but work there in Waikiki. And so we're eager to, to be seen as a... a um, a, a convenient location for folks. A neighborhood clinic. Exactly. Yes, and it, it just so happens that you are able to be provide sort of a one-stop shopping for a lot of things. So you have x-ray machines we on do. site and uh, ultrasounds. And uh, is there an MRI down there? I don't think so. I think that's pretty big. That's, <laughs> like, that's like big hospital. That would take quite a bit of space. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think, we, can, I don't think we have that. Do. No, no, but I don't think so. But for the rest of it, uh, just coming in and getting your flu shot and... Uh, and Absolutely. So. What, are there are there other services that are offered at, at Ohua Clinic? Because I'm seeing some of these down here. So you, can you go there for dental care and your eyes? Well, we we have a dental. We have um, full service dental at our Makahiki Clinic, which is about actually about maybe three blocks from the University of Hawaii. Um, so we're pretty centrally located for that okay, part I of the community. I think we have a map on this one, so we can see. Okay, right great. There. Okay, that's so, great. Uh, so when this one comes up, so the Makahiki Clinic's about. Three blocks. From? I was going to say three, three or four blocks from the university. Close, it's close. Okay. And we're on the uh, we're on the the route for the university bus. So it's it's a it's a, a, a convenient location for that community as well. Um, but we have a dental an entire floor of dental services there. Um, it's a it's a relatively new service for us, even though it's required by the federal government. We we provide uh, we've we've only had this for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, it is a challenge for us because, as we said earlier, um, over half our patients are Medicaid patients, and dental care for adults is not covered by Medicaid. Right. And I bring that up because we bring it up at the state legislature every year. We need to remind folks that dental health is every bit as important as any other kind of health care. And so that apologies, but I, I just have to get the plug in there that we Please need do. to we need to pay attention to providing, um, as a state, appropriate dental care for our adults. They, there is some coverage under Medicaid for children, but there's nothing for adults. 
and um, it's expensive, but it's not as expensive as the alternative uh, in terms of bad health. And yeah. So yeah. let me just put that plug out there that folks need to remember that you know when we when we come to the legislature and ask them to consider funding dental care, um, it really is it really is intended to to make. The, to, to fill that real and genuine need for adults on Medicaid. Well, and I think when we don't do that, it, be, it ends up being penny wise and pound foolish. I, I'm afraid so. <laughs> and, and, and the same with, I think, basic primary care, that so. when people aren't getting their high blood pressure or their diabetes or uh, whatever it is, uh, even uh, m basic mental health care uh, or, or contraception, if they need contraception, mm -hmm. then Later on, we have other issues that, that come down the road where we show up at the emergency room because we have an abscess in our tooth or um, you know, some other part of us that's, that's our sugars are out of whack or whatever, and then we end up costing a fortune by going to the emergency room when, in fact, it could just be headed off at the pass and provide people with compassionate, quality care exactly. from the start. Exactly. That's exactly what we're aiming for. That's really our desire. Um, you know, emergency rooms are exactly that. They're emergency locations. They're the places we go when catastrophe has happened. Yeah. It's not the right place to go for an ongoing or chronic illness. That needs to be managed in a clinic setting. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I encourage folks who have not sought out a clinic to find one of the community health centers mm -hmm. in their community. If it's if it's you know Waikiki or town, we you know we are very convenient, but if it's not, there's others located throughout the state. So mm -hmm. um, I, I really encourage folks to consider getting their health care. Stop in. Just stop in and have a, have a look. Stop yeah. in and say hello and see what's there for you. It's because, cheerful, nice people, clean, you know, modern we, environment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, the folks that do this don't do this uh, to get rich. We do this because this is, this is what's important to us. Health, you know, having our community healthy is important to us. Yeah. And that's why I sit on the board. It's why our doctors uh, provide the services that they provide. If, if, well, uh, actually, I would love to talk about that more, about um, some of the specific services that are provided and uh, maybe some examples of what uh, uh, maybe some patients that you've, that you've known or helped and why you actually do sit on the board. Because you've got a lot of choices where you're able to spend mm -hmm. your time and uh, considerable, you know, brain power and charm. So um, <laughs> after that, we'll, we'll just take a break for a moment, and then we'll come back and um, address some of those topics. Okay. Then. okay. I'm Winston Welch. I am uh, on Out and About Think Tech Live series network, and I am talking right now with Phyllis Dendell of Waikiki Health, and we'll be back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Vic Kraft, the volunteer host of It Never Got Quiet. Think Tech is important to me because we can bring the issue of Hawaiian veterans of the Vietnam War to the community and tell their story. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech will run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, www.thanksforthinktech.causebox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, mahalo. Hi, uh, we're back and we're live. I'm Winston Welch and this is Out and About on Big Tech Live Streaming Network Series. And today we're talking with Phyllis Dendel, Board Chair of Marketing and Development of Waikiki Health, about the vital programs and services that it has been offering for over 50 years. So thank you for being here today, Phyllis. It's a pleasure to have you. My pleasure. I was So we've been talking about Waikiki Health and how it started originally as a kind of a drug clinic yes. and to help people that were dealing with those issues and it's morphed into a complete comprehensive care 
facility yes. um, that, that addresses all kinds of needs. Um, you have two major clinics, the Makahiki Clinic close to UH, so I imagine you see probably a few more students there, maybe not, or? Uh, it's a mix, it's a mix from the community because it's a pretty big mix of the, the I mean, the community is a pretty mixed group, so. Mm -hmm. And then the one in Waikiki, and as we were saying, that it's a really actually, you think about Waikiki, there are almost no other, there's no clinics per se there. I mean, mm -hmm. there's some individual doctor's offices mm -hmm. or something, but not something like this. And mm -hmm. I've been down to the, the clinic. It's a very pleasant setting, low rise. Um, there's a farmer's market next door. You can, and, and a thrift <laughs> yep. store, so yep. you can uh, get a lot of things done down there. But um, so you've got uh, some other things here which are more of an outreach nature. Instead of people That's coming true. to you, you're going to them, or you're, they're not located in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. So tell us about probably the, the biggest one that we would hear about would be the, um, the Next Step Shelter, I think. That's right, the Next Step Shelter in Kaka'ako. We, uh, we took over the management of that. Um, it had been in, in existence for a couple of years, and then we took over the management of it. It provides um, shelter to people without homes. Um, individuals and couples, and it's a it's intended to be a short-term homeless uh, shelter with the intent of finding people permanent housing. Um, that's our program, and we provide a variety of services there to assist people. You know, when you're that far sort of out of it, you can't manage to manage housing. There's usually other problems that we can help with as well. So we're very. Um, we're very pleased to um, to ha to be able to provide those services at the Next Step Shelter. Um, homeless programs have been an important part of our work for probably half of the life of the the health center. Mm -hmm. We've been providing homeless services. Um, besides the Next Step Shelter, which is an actual shelter, we also have the Caravan, which is another medical facility in Kaimuki, um, but it's also a mobile medical clinic that we send out. Uh, around the island to various locations to provide outreach to folks who are homeless or are in places without easy medical care. We try to get out to where they are and bring them what care we can through our, our mobile medical clinic. Um, Is that, does that go outside of the urban core itself? It does, it does. I can't tell you the locations, I don't remember but there, hand, but, but the but the idea is yeah that we are we are going to where folks are, mm -hmm. where we know that folks are congregating and where we can, you know, hopefully provide them um, some direct services where they are. Mm -hmm. um, you understand that that for some of our our friends that are homeless, that uh, mental health issues are a problem. So we want to be thoughtful about being able to provide services you know, in our center for folks with behavioral health, but also recognizing that some of the folks that we have to meet in the community that are homeless, you know, may have mental health issues also. And for those folks, we have to meet them where they are mm -hmm. and provide them what we can. Um, we have sort of the, a similar attitude about our youth outreach. Youth outreach is specifically for um, young people 14 to 21. It's a drop-in uh, center for young people. Um, that are homeless or are at risk. Um, we provide them uh, something to eat. We provide them a place to get cleaned up, to wash their clothes. We have a, an on-site uh, medical professional that can provide them advice and some basic services. Um, but we, we do this in a very non-judgmental way. It's not our job to police these kids. We're just providing them a, loca a safe location to get some of the assistance that they need. Um, for some of them, if we can, we will get them into GED programs to help them become more employable um, so they can get off the street, so they can take care of themselves. Um, but this is, um, this is actually how I got involved in this was through youth outreach. Mm -hmm. Tell is, us about uh, that. Well, they, the, I, I had formerly worked for Kaiser Permanente um, as their director of government relations and um, Waikiki Health was looking to make a change in the laws to permit um, um, homeless youth to get medical care without parental, parental consent. consent. Yep. And it's, um, it's the right thing to do. There's no question about it. It's, it was all in how you do it. Mm -hmm. And so during the legislative process, I got to know the, the folks from Youth Outreach, and I said, well, 
can we do this in a way that doesn't muck up my programs too much? <laughs> and so that's how I got the opportunity to work with them and to create a law that worked perfectly, I think, for, for their needs um, so that it's possible to provide medical care to, um, to homeless youth, for them to consent to their own care. Um, but at the same time, keep, keep appropriate parental consent in other, in other areas. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how I came to realize that we have a number of youth that are, um, that are on the street. They are not all runaways. Some, some of them have been thrown away, mm -hmm. which is, I can't think of anything more tragic than throwing out a child. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, that's our, that's, that's an, imp to us, like I said, we, it's, it's important to meet them where they are and to provide the services where they are. And so let me just tell you about our PATH clinic, which is sort of a similar philosophy. It's designed, um, we took it over from someone who else who had established it. It's designed for pregnant women or women who recently um, had a child who either have substance abuse problems or have had substance abuse problems. Mm -hmm. To help them, we provide um, perinatal, so pre-birth um, medical care, care for their through their, after they've had the baby, pediatric care. And we also help provide services to them um, to help them uh, deal with their addiction. Mm -hmm. we, need, we understand that addiction is an illness. It doesn't go away. You just deal with it. Yeah. So they're at a really difficult time. Yeah. And it'd be real easy to be real judgmental yeah. about moms who take drugs, um, and we just, we just don't do that. Yeah. We just don't do that. Yeah. We just, like I said, we meet them where they are. We provide them the services that improve their life, improve their children's life. We provide them parenting classes. Um, we've, had, we've seen lots of lovely success with this group. That's amazing. Um, and, and that's, that's the uh, sort of a residential campus. Yes, that is. Were. So the young ladies and moms go there with their families? Mm -hmm. the it's um, it's associated with the uh, Salvation Army. Okay. We, we are in partnership with Salvation Army there. Oh, that's a terrific program. And all of these programs really speak to this basic fundamental need to, um, to address these concerns in society mm -hmm. and not judge, because judging mm -hmm. makes it worse. It all does. that does is make me morally superior, and, and for whatever reason, uh, you're, not, you're, not it, you're not as good as I am, so uh, we don't do that here. We just say, you're a human being. You're worthy of respect and good treatment and compassion and uh, and care. And, yes. and all of these programs, the PATH program, the Caravan, the uh, Next Up Shelter, the Youth Outreach, and then, of course, the regular clinics, they have um, very strong, as uh, integrated, uh, so, so case management, as yes. it were. So you might have a, um, a psychologist uh, there and maybe... Um, for, for the moms, maybe lactation specialist or absolutely, we we inter refer folks, you know, based on their needs. Um, you know, the the they're folks at Next Step Shelter that need medical care. We of course match them up with the medical care that we we provide through Waikiki Health. Um, and do you, would you hook in people as well to the to the system so that they might be able to. Yeah, get into uh, to, to housing or to get food. Uh, you know, uh, absolutely. SNAP or, or absolutely, we we are we. Nothing makes us happier than coordinating with the other programs that are in the state. Mm -hmm. They both the, both the community, both the the government kinds of programs that are available, and other community organizations. For example, we have a um, we provide services to a group of folks that have HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. and um, we do a pretty good job of that. We've got a pretty large population among our, among our patients. But we, we do this also in cooperation with the Life Foundation mm -hmm. and with Gregory House, which are both organizations that provide direct services to people with HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to us to coordinate where we can, not to overlap, to try and um, assure that our care is, is really integrated into the community and um, really provides the best services we can find for the for the our patients and clients and guests. Yes, uh, well, and it and it's 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 great to hear that because you know we we are stretched in society now, but there's a lot of great organizations out there doing great work, and 
this is certainly one of them. This is a, the, the safety net. This is the bedrock there. But it's also for all of us to go down there. So we, it, it needs our support. You're, you're okay for accepting new, uh, new patients? Absolutely, absolutely. And I encourage folks to, to, to drop in and have a, you know, have a peek around our, uh, our waiting room and, and uh, see how the place feels to you. Um, it's uh, you're certainly welcome to come have a look at us and uh, so we can it, and other people can get involved you can volunteer your time down there or is something like that really available at this point or well we have we have different opportunities for example um, we're very fortunate at the next step shelter that we have a variety of churches and community organizations that provide meals for our guests at the next step shelter who have made a schedule and take turns providing breakfast or dinner to the folks at the shelter. Um, so in that way, we, we have uh, opportunities. Probably coordinated with other agencies. So, mm -hmm. And if people want to find out more about this, they can go to WaikikiHealth.org. Yes. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay, WaikikiHealth.org. And um, there's probably, I think, the best way to, to get involved is when the community needs our support, whether it's through legislation or donations. Certainly, people can donate we, to the. To we the... Uh, we are grateful for donations. We, free, we we try to explain what we do and give people the opportunity to make a contribution. That's how I initially got it, uh, involved. Was I was a donor long before I was a board member. Well, um, if if. If this organization has people like you on its board, <laughs> it's a re uh, reflection of, of real um, beauty and compassion and integrity and exactly what we need in our society. Well, and you, you are a person that's making a difference. Waikiki Health is making a difference. I thank you for, for being on the board, for uh, helping our community, and for coming on my show today. Well, so. thank you so much for letting me come and talk about this. I'm very passionate about the work that we do, and I'm so grateful you gave me the opportunity to talk about it. Well, I, I would like to invite you back so we can discuss this in depth another day, but unfortunately we are out of time today. So I'm going to have to wrap this up. This is Winston Welch and out and about on Think Tech live streaming series, and I've been delighted to talk with Phyllis Dendell, board chair, Marketing and Development and Volunteer Board Chair yes. of Waikiki yeah. Health. And we certainly appreciated learning about this wonderful organization. For more information on today's topic, visit WaikikiHealth.org. Thanks for tuning in. We welcome your feedback. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Ray Sangalang, and our floor manager, Robert McLean, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. I'll see you here every other Monday at 3 for more of Out and About on ThinkTech. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>